Hello, I'm uh, Gerhard Joseph. Um, I'm a retiree from the City University of New York, and I've been coming to uh, the Dickens Project, the Dickens Universe, since the early 80s. And as a matter of fact, the very first year I came, I gave a weekend uh, talk on David Copperfield. So I'm sort of looking forward to doing David Copperfield again this summer. But of course, that's not to be. So I would like to consider the opening line in three contexts. First, the novel itself, two, the life of Charles Dickens, and three, uh, the reader as hero of his own life. Uh, the famous opening line of the novel, as you all know, is um, whether I turn out to be the hero of my own life, or that station must belong to anybody else, the following pages must show. Just a word about the word hero or protagonist or character. Um, they, of course, go all the way back to uh, Aristotle in the Poetics, who talks about character, plot, and so forth. But a more recent, if you don't mind getting a bit theoretical, a more recent notion of the novel or of any text is it's a cluster of words. Now, those words may cohere together into what we call a character. And in that respect, uh, it's true that if David Copperfield himself is the obvious hero of his own life, in a way, he sort of dominates very powerfully the childhood section, uh, the first years of his life until his mother dies. And then other characters, really powerful characters, Betsy Trotwood, uh, Uriah Heep, Carberry, um, even Mr. Dick, come in. And it's not that David disappears, it's that he doesn't have the effective power that he's had in the first third of the novel. The only other character that one might consider uh, as a hero of this novel would, of course, be Steerforth, who uh, you know, is a Byronic romantic figure, especially in that final great storm scene. But he really does have uh, certain blemishes, uh, if only his seduction of little Emily. And uh, Carlyle, who talks about the hero in on hero and heroism which is the, is in the end note to that first sentence uh, generally gives us idealized figures and um well, steerforth and for that matter uh david is uneducated heart uh they do have some warts some blemishes uh moving on to Charles Dickens himself, who would fit very nicely into Carlyle's notion of the hero as a man of letters. Uh, certainly Dickens would be one of the real ma uh, uh, heroes of the ma as man of letters in the 19th century. Uh, but again, he certainly does have some warts. He does have some blemishes. If only his uh, dumping of Catherine and the children for a young uh, Ellen Ternan. Finally, the reader as the hero of his own life, at least this hero, the only one I can really talk about. I mean, I've been living in my head 24-7 uh, for a good many years, and consequently can't imagine another, another hero for myself, as uh, if I were to write a novel. Um, However, I do realize there are other people in the world and one wants to take them into consideration. So I guess I'd like to end with a quote by Charles Wright that uh, George Levine and I have bandied about for a good many years. It goes the following way. The ravens hawking from tree to tree, not you, not you, that is all the world allows and all one could need. Thank you. Mm -hmm.